it'll be really obvious really quickly that we've never done this before. But as a progressive youth movement, we are embracing technology today, and it's great to see. My name is Steve Kent. I am your volunteer chief commissioner and chair of the Board of Governors of Scouts Canada, and I officially call this special meeting of Scouts Canada to order. This is a meeting that, in accordance with our bylaw, that I did call on behalf of the Board of Governors. And there is one agenda item only for today's special meeting. I would like to welcome everybody who is joining us. We have members of our Board of Governors, voting members from Voyager Council, and a number of other people that are here physically in the National Service Center here in Ottawa. So thank you for joining us. As well, there's a, there's a gathering of scouts taking place this weekend in or near Toronto. And we have a number of voting members that have gathered there who are joining us both online and by conference call as well. So welcome to everybody in Toronto. And thanks to the folks that are coordinating there, signing people in, and also acting as scrutineers. And we have a number of people that are joining us both by the webcast, which you can see displayed up here. And also, so uh, there are people that are joining us by the traditional conference call as well. We have any issues with the webcast and you're hear having difficulty hearing or the technology fails us, I'd encourage people that aren't here physically to immediately go to the conference call uh, and we will, we will reconvene there. I have determined after consulting with our scrutineers that we do indeed have quorum for this special meeting of the members. We have uh, between the folks participating online and physically in the room. When we started a couple of minutes ago we had 45 in attendance. We have 10 voting members in Toronto. We have a few on the phone as well. Uh, so that does certainly constitute a quorum. And the bylaw of, of our Scouts Canada can be amended by a, a resolution of the Board of Governors. Uh, it now requires an affirmative vote of 66.666% of the voting members before it can be implemented. Um, as the bylaw requires an affirmative vote confirming the resolution passed by the Board of Governors, Amendments to the motion are not in order, so this is effectively a yes-no vote. Um, I'll outline in, in a little more detail why we're here and the nature of this vote and the process we're going to follow today, but as a little bit of good news to get our meeting started, I'm very pleased to... Now I'm hearing the echo on the speakerphone. I'm very pleased to reiterate an announcement that was made over the last week or so that Scouts Canada, effective April 30th, as a brand new executive commissioner and chief executive officer, of course, he, as an officer of our corporation, is joining us today. So I would like to welcome to the podium to say a few words our new executive commissioner and CEO, Mr. Michael McKay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Steve. I don't want to take too much of the time of the meeting, but just say that it's a great pleasure for me to be here, to have joined the organization. I look forward to contributing as much as uh, possible, making this one of the greatest uh, youth movements in, uh, in the country. So thank you very much, and I look forward to working with all of you. Thanks, Mike, and welcome. We are thrilled to have you joining our adventure. Uh, you're one of our own, uh, one of our many, one of our millions of alumni in this country. Mike was influenced by scouting growing up, and is now currently uh, a scout leader here in the Ottawa area in Voyager Council. So great to have you on board as our new executive commissioner and CEO. I also want to pay tribute and give thanks on behalf of the Board of Governors and all our members. Um, I want to give thanks and pay tribute to Rob Stewart, who is also joining us today, who has previously served as our executive commissioner and CEO and most recently served in that capacity once again as we, as we went through another transition. Uh, Rob continues to do great service to the organization, recently celebrated his 30-year anniversary of employment with the organization, and Rob, uh, on behalf of the board and our members, I want to thank you for your continued ex exemplary con contribution to scouting. Thank you. So why are we here for a special meeting? You will. You will be presented with, you all have the resolution and it will be explained in greater detail when we, when we entertain a motion in just a moment. Uh, we're here today and I called a special meeting because it was necessary to 
advance this business in advance of the AGM this fall? Because we're dealing with a, with a motion that affects the composition of the Board of Governors, and because the process to prepare for the annual general meeting that will take place this fall here in Ottawa is already underway, there's a need to, to advance this process now as opposed to waiting until November. It impacts the work that the nominating committee is going to do in terms of identifying candidates to stand for election to the Board of Governors, and it also impacts current board members. We ha also have the unique opportunity this year with a number of board members retiring that we, can, that we can move in a direction like this without necessarily displacing a whole bunch of, of current board members who are somewhere in the middle of what tends to be a three-year term, one-year terms that are, that are re-elected re annually to a maximum of three years. Hence the reason to, to be gathered here today, and I want to thank members for their cooperation in, in making this possible. And I also want to thank the members who are not voting members for joining us in the audience here today, in the audience in Toronto as well, and also the many folks that are joining us online. So it's exciting. There's lots of progress from a democratic perspective being made in this organization. We're implementing an online voting system that's going to allow, for the very first time in our history, every registered member who meets the criteria, the opportunity to participate in the voting process to elect their representatives for the annual general meeting this fall. Lots of good things are happening. We continue to grow. Uh, we continue to provide a, a challenging, safe, fun, exciting program for for tens of thousands of young people across this country every year, and I certainly want to thank all of you for being part of that continued success and that continued growth. Here's the process we'll follow today for dealing with the resolution that's been passed by the Board of Governors that now requires an affirmative vote of the voting members uh, with a two-thirds majority, two majority voting in favor. The process is that a member of the Board of Governors, uh, Jessica Page, the Vice Chair Strategic, is going to make a motion. I understand that Glenn Armstrong, the past Chief Commissioner, also a member of the Board of Governors, has agreed to second that motion. Jessica will have the first opportunity to speak, then Glenn will have an opportunity to speak if he wishes. The floor will be open to, to questions and comments from voting members. We will do our best to follow the feed online as well uh, to, to deal with questions and concerns that may be raised through that forum. And when I, when I sense that questions and comments have all been made, I will call the question and I'll seek the assistance of the scrutineers to, to conduct the vote. Then we'll adjourn. So, on that note, uh, I should also introduce the other gentleman at the head table who you can't see if you're joining us in computer land. John Himmons, the Vice Chair of Finance, is joining me up here, along with Michael McKay, who you just met, Glenn Armstrong and Jessica Page, who will speak to you in just a moment. So, Jessica, I'd like to invite you to come forward to make your motion. I'll ask Glenn uh, to second it, and then I'll give you an opportunity to speak to the resolution. Chief Commissioner, I move the affirmation of the resolution of the Board of Governors relating to the size and composition of the Board of Governors as distributed as well as the previously distributed bylaw amendments. The resolution passed by the Board of Governors is as follows. The size, be it resolved that the size of the Board of Governors of Scouts Canada shall be comprised of 15 individuals, each of whom shall be at least 18 years of age and have power under law to contract. One, Chief Commissioner and Chair of the Board. Two, Vice Chair of the Board Strategic. 3. Vice Chair of the Board Finance, 4. Past Chair of the Board, 5. National Youth Commissioner, ex officio if not at least 18 years old, 6. 10 individuals at large. Of these total 15 members, at least there will be at least one member from BC Yukon, at least one member from Alberta Northwest Territories, at least one member from Saskatchewan Manitoba, at least two members from Ontario Nunavut, at least one member from Quebec, at least one member from Atlantic Canada, and at least three of the 15 individuals must be between the ages. Be it further resolved that the selection of the National Youth Commissioner shall be added to the business of the annual general meeting. The National Youth Commissioner, if 18 years of age or older, shall be an officer of the Scout Canada Corporation. 
The Executive Commissioner and CEO and the Honorary Legal Counsel shall be ex officio non-voting members of the Board of Governors and non-voting members of the Scout of Canada. The nomination of a new Chief Commissioner may take place up to one year in advance, that the nomination shall be submitted to the voting members of the agency and that if approved, the individual shall become the Deputy Chief Commissioner and an ex officio member of the Board of Governors. That two minor wording changes take place in Bylaw 2 to add the nomination of honorary officers to the role of the nominating committee and to complete a missed change in wording from Chief Scout to Patron Scout when referring to the Governor General. The bylaw wording under Article 3, Meetings of Members, Section B, Business at Annual General Meetings, the following business shall be transacted at each general meeting. Section 4, Recommendations to the Patron Scout of an individual to fill the position of Chief Commissioner, and this recommendation may take place up to one year in advance. Article 4, Officers, Section A, Officers, the officers of the corporation shall be the Patron Scout, Chief Commissioner, Vice Chair of the Board, Vice Chair of the Board of Finance, Executive Commissioner, CEO, Staff Chief Commissioner, Honorary Legal Counsel, National Youth Commissioner, if at least 18, and such other officers as the Board may determine, herein referred to individually as an officer and collectively as the officers. The roles of the officers, the respective, role, respective roles of the officers are as follows. Section 9, National Youth Commissioner. The National Youth Commissioner ensures that the youth of Scouts of Canada are involved and engaged in every decision that relates to their scouting advocates for young volunteers throughout the movement, and ensures that youth leadership development opportunities are provided for all youth members. Under Article 5, Board of Governors, Section A, Composition, the Board shall be comprised of 15 individuals, each of whom shall be at least 18 years of age and have power under law to contract. 1. Chief Commissioner and Chair of the Board. 2. Vice Chair of the Board Strategic. 3. Vice Chair of the Board Finance. 4. Past Chair of the Board. 5. National Youth Commissioner. 6. 10 individuals at large. 7. Of these 15 members, at least one member must be from each of BC Yukon, comma, Alberta North West Territories, comma, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, comma, Quebec, and Atlantic. At least two members must be from Ontario and none of it. Of these 15 members, at least three members must be between the ages of 18 and 26. The Executive Commissioner, CEO, and the Honorary Legal Counsel will be ex officio non voting members. And in the event that the National Youth Commissioner is not at least 18 years of age, the National Youth Commissioner would be an ex officio non voting member. Under Article 7, Committees and Task Groups, Section B, Nominating Committee, Section 4, the Nominating Committee shall prepare for a presentation to the annual general meeting of members each year a list of A. Recommendation to the Patron Scout for appointment to the position of Chief Commissioner, and this recommendation may take place up to one year in advance. B. Additional officers, namely Vice Chair of the Board Finance, Vice Chair of the Board Strategic, Past Chief Commissioner, National Youth Commissioner, Honorary Legal Counsel, and such other officer or officers as the Board may determine. C. Up to 10 members at large. Of these 15 members, at least one member must be from each of C. Yukon, Alberta Northwest Territories, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, Quebec, and Atlantic Canada. At least two members must be from Ontario, none of it. Of these 15 members, at least three members must be between the ages of 18 and 26. Uh, F. Honorary officers and honorary members. And G. The patron scout in the event the Governor General, for any reason, is unable to accept office. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Glenn Arthur, the past chair of the board and a voting member of the corporation. Commissioner, second. Thanks to you both. Great reading skills, Jessica. And I'll now invite Jessica as the mover of the motion to have the first opportunity to speak. Great, thank you. So, a number of us on the Board of Governors have recognized for a long time that our current board structure is far from ideal. In fact, some would argue that it is neither manageable nor effective. The first issue relates to size. Currently, our board has 23 members. Board membership is allocated to include youth representatives between the ages of 18 and 26, 
Geographic Representatives, Vice Chairs of the Board, Strategic and Finance, Past Chair of the Board, Chief Commissioner, and the Chief Executive Officer. Quite simply, the size of the board as guided by our bylaw has become cumbersome and we're having difficulty completing our workload in a timely manner. Additionally, there is a significant expense associated with convening such a large group. A committee of the board has been exploring this issue for some time. The second issue relates to optimization. The specific provision of geographic locations where board members must reside makes it extremely difficult to recruit individuals who have specialized expertise that the board requires. For example, if a member from Ontario is coming to the end of their term, that next member has to be from Ontario. That means that even if we have a pressing requirement for a pension expert on the board and we find one in Nova Scotia who's willing to serve, we're unable to bring them onto the board. We'd need to find someone from Ontario who is willing to serve but may not have the expertise that we need for optimal board performance. With the proposed amendment, we hope to reduce the size of the board to around 15 members. We also wish to add the National Youth Commissioner as an official voting member. Our current practice is for the National Youth Commissioner to sit in on meetings as a guest, but he or she cannot vote. The National Youth Commissioner would also be made an officer of the corporation, provided he or she is over 18 years of age, which is required by Canadian law. If we want to relax the geographic provisions to ensure that we have representation from across, oh sorry, we want to relax the geographic provisions to ensure that we have representation from across the country while still allowing for at-large members to be recruited and elected for specific purposes related to their subject matter expertise. These changes will make the board more effective, more nimble, more efficient while still ensuring that we have a diversity of views represented from across this large country. In addition, these changes are aligned with the best practices of other national organizations who are moving in similar directions of reduced size with higher emphasis on subject matter expertise. There's an additional provision to select the Chief Commissioner a year in advance in order to allow adequate time for transition. As well, the CEO will be given ex officio status in order to avoid conflicts of interest. I had the opportunity to review these amendments with our national service team and other members around the end of March, and after discussion I found there was very strong support for the changes, and that is why I'm putting them forward to you today. I invite Glenn to, as a seconder, to have an opportunity to speak to the motion. Thank you, Chief Commissioner. Um, ladies and gentlemen, as the past chair of the board and the chair of the nominating committee, I strongly support this motion. I also am very pleased about the section of this motion that relates to the National Youth Commissioner finally becoming, as part of the National Key 3, a member of the Board of Governors. A lot of people have been working hard for many years and I give special credit to, to Jessica Page and to Dylan Reinhardt, our current NYC, because I think it's time that the National Youth Commissioner has a seat and a voice at the table. If they happen to be under the age of 18, <laughs> thank you, if they happen to be under the age of 18, I do not see why that should stop that voice. It simply means that under Canadian law, they cannot have a vote. Thank you very much, Mr. Chief. The floor is now open for further discussion on the motion. We will do our best to facilitate this to give everybody an opportunity. Um, I'll obviously be able to identify voting members in the room who wish to speak. Uh, I have questions from the folks gathered in Toronto um, and some of them will probably join the conference call line as well if they wish to speak and the questions that are showing up through the webcast from voting members we will try and address those as well. I will invite Jessica and, and Glenn to answer some of the questions and other take so with questions or comments. I don't see any hands here in Ottawa. Um, Anybody online or on the conference call line that wishes to speak to the resolution? It is. I'll ask again. 
Um, is there, and if perhaps somebody in Toronto could confirm whether there's anybody who wishes to speak to the resolution? Confirm yes or no? Thank you. Well, your CEO. Can the folks on, the, can someone on the conference call line say something? Thank you. You just earned your conference call badge. I hope I hope Doug Reed's not on the call. He'll probably go and create one. So can someone confirm uh, that there are questions or not in Toronto? Okay. Excellent. Vancouver has no one in Vancouver has a comment. Oh, we can't hear whoever is. Oh, it's getting all crazy now. Uh, we can't hear whoever is speaking on the conference call. I will repeat what they say then if you can't hear them. Uh, if a chair or vice chair, question from Fred White in Nova Scotia. Um, if a chair or vice chair is from a certain area, does that cover the requirement for that area? And the answer is yes, it does cover that requirement for that area. That's not to say that that person would necessarily be the only representative from that area. The nominating committee would continue to do its best to ensure broad representation from across the country that's as broad as possible, consistent with past practice. Does Peter get a webcast badge? Well, it took you several tries, Peter, but yes. We encourage personal development. Quebec is good. That'll be a discussion for another day. I love Quebec. Anybody on the conference call have any questions or concerns? Okay. So we will allow Toronto time to connect by conference call, or folks use the use the webcast if you wish. Um, but we'll give you time. We'll make sure everybody's had an opportunity before we call the question. Kaylee, all they were saying was that uh, they're, the folks in Toronto are having trouble connecting to the conference call. So we're just making sure they have the right information to, to connect. And I'm also, if anybody out there has questions and wishes to email me, I'm monitoring that live as well. Hi, Barry. We hear you. Don from the Yukon, are you now on the conference call? Okay. All right, so it's time for Gingangguli. You guys are the Umpas. Yeah, what, what's the challenge for the conference call? But we heard Barry, who's in Toronto. Great, thank you, Toronto. Mute. How about they do the umpas and we do the gingangguli? Wouldn't that be cool? Except there's a time delay, so it would be just like doing it with cubs. So, or the board, same delay. Um, so, questions in Toronto? Go right ahead.
I'm going to invite Jessica or Glenn to speak, unless there's another member of the board that wishes to speak. I will say, simple answer is yes. We've done considerable research, but I'll allow, I'll allow those folks to address the question. Uh, sorry, the, the ben for the benefit of those who can't hear what I'm hearing, uh, the question was, you know, is there experience from other organizations, from other corporate boards that suggests that there's an optimal size, that smaller, a smaller size like we're proposing is actually more effective? So I'll, uh, I'll invite, it looks like Jessica wishes to speak, and if anybody else does, then I'll certainly be happy to recognize them. Just briefly, um, we did have a, a board subgroup that was looking at this issue, and actually it's been going on for a number of years, and they did, the, the first subgroup that was looking at this did do a review of best practices of other boards across the country, and it was deemed by them that this was standardized as well, not standardized, but it was common um, by more organizations, as well on our most recent iteration of this task group, we had a number of board members with expertise in corporate development and other boards, including David Connolly, and um, he mentioned the standards by a kind of licensing authority whose name I'm forgetting right now, John or David, can you tell what the um, certification that we were looking at Institute for Corporate Directors, non you know, not for profit, and um, this was recommendations by them as well. In fact, it was recommended to have even smaller than 15, but we felt that 15 was a good balance, still providing the broad geographic representation, which we do still feel is important within our organization, but cutting the board down to size um, so that discussions can be a little more manageable. As I mentioned earlier, we do have 23 members of our board right now, which is a very, very large group to have any meaningful debate or discussion in a timely manner. And I think with 15 members, you can still have a lot of subject matter experts, a lot of good discussion, while it being a much more manageable size so people can have their opinions heard and everyone can contribute. That question or have anything else to add? Okay. Okay, so I understand that Toronto had difficulty hearing me, so I'm going to say some of that again a little bit. Um, just to reiterate, we did have uh, a, a number of task groups have been looking at this over the last couple of years, and it was... Toronto, are you okay? Anyway, so they did um, feel that this was standard towards a number of different across the country, as well as the guidelines provided by um, directors on profit. Uh, this is in line with their recommendations as well. And in fact, many, the, the recommendations actually for a smaller size board would be moving around closer to 10 as well. But we felt that 15 would be a good, a good, um, a good compromise for our organization based on the geographic representation that we still wanted to have while still cutting the size down to make less unwieldy. So are you okay with that explanation? A follow-up question? Okay, thanks. Great, thank you. It sounds like the folks in Toronto are having more fun. It's like a movie with subtitles where there's a delayed reaction. Yes. Further discussion on the motion. Are there any other questions? Toronto or Vancouver or Quebec or anywhere else that you need? Uh, ask a second time. Is there any further discussion? on the motion that is on the floor.
Anybody online who wishes to post a question? Voting members. I understand Vancouver is also okay. I didn't say it earlier. Welcome to everybody who's gathered in Vancouver for our commissioner's conference. I hope you're taking good care of the NLT representative we sent out there. And sorry, with the rest of us could not be with you, but we will see you soon. I've not received any emails. Everybody on the conference call line is fine. Everybody on the webcast seems fine. Everybody here, any questions or comments? I'm, I'm sorry to prolong. I just want to make sure that we give everybody ample opportunity to the of the format today. Hearing none, I am now going to call the question. And I'm going to ask for the members present to raise your voting cards. And I will ask for our scrutineers uh, in Toronto. I'd ask for our and for the folks online, we have a poll now open. So for the folks that are tuned, voting members logged into the webcast, you can now vote. All in favor of the resolution as presented, please raise your voting cards in Toronto. And if you're online, please vote online now. Agree is in favor. Disagree is not in favor. Please raise your cards, and I'll ask the scrutineers to get the count. I'll also indicate as we do this that we have 12 members who are 12 proxies that are being held by voting members today as well, in addition to the substitutions that have been submitted in accordance with our bylaw. We have three people online who have yet to vote. 27 of 28 of 30 have voted. Pardon me? Oh, that includes me and David. Okay. Sorry. So we can now confirm that everybody online has voted. We have 28 in favor. Can somebody please tell me how many? I'll ask the scrutineers here to give me a count as well, please. Ottawa, can you hold your cards up one more time? Haley, to answer your question, we're awaiting the tabulation from Toronto, so that we'll have that in just a moment. Guys, do we have the Ottawa count? Thank you. Can we, we have the online results, 28 in favor. How many here in Ottawa? 30 yes in Ottawa. So that's, that's 58. And how many? 10 yes in Toronto. So that's 68 in favor. And all those opposed? And anybody? Thank you. 
All right, I'll now call for those opposed. Please, in Toronto or Ottawa, raise your red voting cards. And on the web, you've already voted. Thank you. On the web, you've already voted. Thank you. In Ottawa, there are no votes against. One. We have one vote against in Toronto. Uh, in Toronto. One vote against in Toronto. Anybody else? Can we grant the request from the additional members who are trying to get into the webcast, please? And to Chris and Mickey who just joined the webcast, I would encourage you to now vote. Voting is open and we are awaiting your vote. We now have 30 in favor online. Uh, we, I, there were 10 in favor in Toronto. There were 30 in favor here in Ottawa. So 70 in favor. Plus Linda Boone is 71. So I'm going to allow the scrutineers to respond. I'm just trying to uh, keep people posted. And we have one vote against. Michelle Castle is registering a yes vote. She has not voted online and she has not voted in Toronto. And that vibration is Michelle sending me a message. Check to make sure nobody's voting on Twitter. All right, scrutineers, can I get a final result? Yes vote is 75. Yes vote is 75. No vote is 1. I declare the resolution carried. Thank you. And I'd like to thank you all for your tremendous support. I believe that this will enable your Board of Governors to provide even more effective leadership for our organization, working closely with our volunteers and members across the country. Order, please. Glenn? Dylan? Still having a meeting? Thank you. I'd like to thank everybody for their participation, both online, on the conference call, in person, in both Vancouver and Toronto, and apparently Quebec. Thanks to all of you. Uh, enjoy the rest of this scouting year. We're counting on all of you to help us continue to grow scouting and achieve our mission and, and bring our programs to more children and youth across this country. Have a great summer, and we look forward to seeing you along the trail. I will now ask for a motion to adjourn. Moved by Neil Rice, member of the Board of Governors. Seconded by Elizabeth Smith Windsor, member of the Board of Governors. This meeting is now adjourned. Thank you.